Tonight we want to talk about the process of change. How many of you want to have a change in some area of your life? Okay. Well, I need to back up and ask another question first. How many of you want to change yourself? You know, usually we have to change before our circumstances change. Did you know that? Did you know that? Usually we have to change, and many times God's using our circumstances to drive us to Him to finally get open enough to let Him do what He wants to do in our lives. I think before we will really let God take over, we have to come to the end of ourselves, and that takes a while because we're pretty strong, and some of us it takes longer than others because we, we want to do it. We've got good ideas, even for God. Amen. Well, now, God, you could do this. Have you ever done that? Well, God, you could do this. Like, he really needs our advice. That's pretty silly, right? But the word change means to transform, to change the nature, the function, or the condition of, or to convert. Now, you know, new believers are often called new converts because if any man be in Christ, he is changed. Something wonderfully amazing happens to him on the inside. He doesn't look any different. If he was overweight, he's still overweight. If he was bald, he's still bald. He doesn't look any different. And most of the time, day one doesn't act that much different. He might be a little happier and have a little more peace. And, but we still see some of the same issues. Well, if we're new creatures. How and why do we still act in old ways? It's so simple when we see it. It's just because what God has done in us by his grace and mercy totally is a gift to us that we receive only by faith. There's nothing that God does for us at the new birth that we can ever earn or deserve. Now, I had an idea when I was studying for this. This is a converter, and if you ever travel out of the country, you know how important these are. Because if I don't have one of these when I go out of the country, and I would take my flat iron and plug it into the wall, it would fry it. <laughs> so we're going to pretend like the power in the wall is God. Now, if I would just go in my own condition and try to plug into God without going through Christ, God's holiness and my unholiness would have a collision and we literally could not survive in the presence of God. So Christ becomes our converter <laughs> and he's plugged into God because he did everything just right and then we come and we plug into him and then through him we can communicate with God, but only through him. Amen? I'm not going out of the country here in a couple of weeks without my box full of converters. And I want to encourage you to always stay plugged into your converter, which is Jesus Christ, because through him, you can go to God, know that you're righteous through him, in his name, you can come and pray and ask for anything because the good news is, is whatever we're not, Jesus is in our place. I even, I don't think that we can even pray one perfect prayer. We, we probably can't even pray a prayer that God could receive an answer if we didn't go in the name of Jesus. But when we go in the name of Jesus, whatever I didn't say right, Jesus takes it and fixes it up before it's presented to the Father, and then it just sounds like this perfect prayer that he's all happy to answer. Stay plugged in. The worst thing in the world you can do is get unplugged. Sometimes when you start running out of power, you need to just go do what you would do to your battery, plug in for a while. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. When he's converted, he becomes a new creature on the inside. 
Let's look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. No one born or begotten of God deliberately, knowingly, and habitually practices sin. Now, it doesn't say he can't sin. It doesn't even say that he doesn't sin. It says that he does not deliberately, knowingly, habitually practice sin. In other words, anyone who's born of God, if you're truly born again, there's got to be some kind of change. Amen? And there should be continual change as we go along. The path of the righteous grows brighter and brighter every day. We are changed into his image from glory to glory. We're in a process of being changed, and God is not upset that we have not arrived. None of us have arrived. The Apostle Paul said, I have not arrived. But one thing I do, I press on. In Christ, you don't have to be mad at yourself or feel guilty and condemned because you're not fully, completely what you ought to be yet. Matter of fact, the more guilt and condemnation you drag around with you, the less likely you are to keep changing. Focusing on what's wrong with you just redoubles the strength of that problem. Why does he not deliberately knowing and habitually practice sin? Because God's nature abides in him. Everybody say, God's nature is in me. God, wait, I want you to just think about this a minute. Say, I'm God's house. Now, just close your little peepers there for a minute and say this and think about it. God lives in me. God lives in me. Woo. Think about it. Now, that's what it means to be a Christian. It doesn't mean, are you a Christian? Oh, yeah, I go to church. I mean, there's so much to this than just a Sunday morning, 45 minute trip to church where we can't hardly wait to get out. That is not full on Christianity. Amen. You are the home of God and everywhere you go and everywhere I go, we are supposed to represent him. The Bible says that we are God's personal representatives and that he is making his appeal to the world through us. So we need more than a bumper sticker. We need good fruit. And all the fruit of the Spirit is in you at the new birth. It's all there. When you receive Christ, you also receive the Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit lives in you. God lives in two places, his throne in heaven, but he also lives in his house here on earth, which is us. He lives in us individually and collectively as a body. And just think about this, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of you. We are not just a bunch of people gathered here tonight, hearing a good speaker. Wow. God's nature abides in us. And I love the Amplified Bible. It's kind of blunt like I am. And it says, God's nature abides in him, his principle of life. The divine sperm <laughs> remains permanently within him, and he cannot practice sinning. Doesn't say he doesn't sin, but he cannot practice sinning because he is born and begotten of God. Now, why can you not just go ahead and be just a full-on sinner? Now, I mean, if you're truly born again, I'm not just talking about you said a sinner's prayer and nothing changed. I'm talking about you threw yourself on the mercy of God. You admitted that you were a sinner. You asked Christ to come into your life, and you really are working with the Holy Spirit toward positive change in your life. You've not arrived. You've still got lots of issues. You've still got lots of baggage. But if you really look back, although you're not where you need to be, thank God you're not where you used to be. Now, let me say something to you that's important. Be more excited about how far you've come than you are discouraged about how far you have to go. 
I'm going to say that again. Be more excited about how far you've come than you are discouraged about how far you have to go. If you listen to the Holy Spirit, he'll remind you of how far you've come, what all he's done in your life. But if you listen to the devil, all you're ever going to hear is, well, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not. It's interesting. There's not one scripture that tells me what I'm not. All I see in the Bible is I am, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am loved. I am the righteousness of God. I am free. I am redeemed. I am sanctified. I am justified. I am a child of God. I am loved. <laughs> so when you hear everything you're not, remember that's the devil. And what you could do is thank him. You should say, thank you for reminding me what a mess I am and how good God is to put up with me. Turn the tables back on him and he'll be sorry that he ever messed with you. This scripture is so good. The divine sperm. Okay. So that means for all intent and purposes, we are pregnant with godliness. The divine seed, the sperm of God, has been planted in the womb of our spirits. And just as a baby grows, we grow spiritually and become Christ-like in all of our behavior. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And it wouldn't it be wonderful if we could get to the point where we could say, if you've seen me, you've seen Jesus. I'm not ready to say that yet, but... I'm growing. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. I don't even have the nerve to do that. Hey, just watch me. If you do whatever I do, you're going to be in good shape because I'm following Christ. I mean, they made some bold statements that literally, if we said things like that, people would think we were heretics. Amen? It's so important for people to know who they are in Christ how much they're loved, and what you have in you, in you. It hasn't all shown up on the outside yet, but it's making its way there. Just like you plant seed in the ground, and if you water it and you keep the weeds away from it, it will grow. Now, the only other thing that can, can cause it not to grow is if the ground is no good, but when we're planted in the ground of God, the ground is always good. Amen? Amen? And he's planted himself in us, individually and collectively, as a body, and we're growing, 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 growing. Now, usually before growing comes some kind of chastisement. I'll go tell them. <laughs> usually before growing some comes some kind of chastisement or we see in the word, you know, that we need to change. It's like I told you this morning, I said to my friend Penny, have you ever had a problem with pride? She said, not till you started teaching on it. <laughs> so guess what? You may find out tonight that you've got some problems you didn't know you had. I had all kinds of problems I didn't know I had. I thought everybody else had a problem. I kept praying for Dave to change and God told me Dave wasn't the problem. I didn't get it. I thought, well, if he's not the problem, who is? There's only me and him. It can't be. You know, we never think that it's us. And I think real spiritual maturity is to be able to receive the conviction of the Holy Spirit and not let it condemn you. Oh, boy, another thing wrong with me. No, we need to get to the point where we say, thank you, God, that you love me enough that you're not going to leave me alone, ignorant and blind to my mess. I want to know the truth so the truth can make me free. We're all in a process of change. God supplies us with everything that we need for total transformation, which is another word for change. He restores us. He brings us back to an original state. 
He puts us back in a position that he intended us to have before Satan ever got involved in man's business. God wants to restore man to the original plan that he had for him in the garden. And a lot of that plan was fellowshipping with him, spending good time with God, having an awareness that he's with you all the time and that he cares about every single thing that concerns you. I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes God just likes to show out and let you know that he cares about things that you wouldn't even begin to think that he would care about. I had a really cute and unique thing happen just last week. Sometimes I get some unique things sent to me at the office. And, you know, people are just so sweet. And many times, even though what they want to give doesn't make any sense to me, it's what they had to give. And so I've learned to receive graciously. And if it's not something for me, then I'll pass it on to somebody else. So somebody sent me an $85 gift certificate to the tractor supply store. Now, if you're watching my TV or if you happen to be here, don't be offended. This turns out really good. But honestly, I didn't have a clue what I was going to do. And I looked and I thought, now why would somebody send me me? You know. But I know people give what they have to give. And God sees that just as precious seed as anything else. Well, I don't like to waste anything that anybody gives. And so I had it on my counter and I'm kind of moving it around for about a month thinking, what am I going to do with that? I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I asked my daughter if she wanted it. She said, I don't go to the tractor supply store. So I'd move it around a little bit more. And so one day last week, I think it was last Monday, I was working out with my trainer and, uh, I do that three days a week. And uh, in the midst of my workout, he said, yeah, when I leave here today, I got to go pick up a part from the tractor supply store. I said, wow, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Have I got a gift for you? Now here's the thing that was funny. His part cost $85.64. Now, he, he's a believer, and me and him both, it's like, can you believe that God cared enough about that woman's gift to make sure it got used properly, about this guy who could have paid for his part? It's not about whether you can pay for it or not. It's just like, we were just like kind of awestruck, like two little kids really tickled that God cared about his tractor part. Come on, give God a praise. Intimacy with God is so wonderful, isn't it? To know that he's your best friend. Isn't that cool? I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Bring it to me and I'll take care of it. He doesn't want us to be under something all the time. He wants us to know that we're the head and not the tail above and not beneath and that we have authority and power. You have power. So stop acting like a weakling. Stop saying, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And say through Christ, I can, I can, I can, I can. He doesn't want us to be under pressure, under stress, under attack. <laughs> I'm sure you run into people, how are you today? Well, I'm under attack. How are you today? I'm under pressure. Well, you know what? The Lord spoke to me one time. If you'd stay on the attack, you wouldn't be under attack all the time. And we need to live with an attitude of knowing who we are in Christ and who we belong to. Not a belligerent attitude, but instead of going, out, get those shoulders back, hold your head up. Amen. 
Know that you have the power of God on the inside of you. The nature of God is on the inside of you. And you're changing every day, being molded into his image through the power of Christ. Amen? Now, we all want to be changed, but we don't all want to change. <laughs> Think about it. If I say to everybody in here, do you want to be changed? Oh, yeah. But see, we, what we want is we don't want to be transformed. We want to be translated. We want to just be here and then all of a sudden be there. Oh, God, change me. And woo, <laughs> Superman in the phone box. We're changed. Well, it doesn't work that way. You're going to find out <laughs> about transformation and the little process that's a little messy. Change is a sign that we're alive. It's a sign that we're growing. We're born for change. We get bored with sameness. Listen, I'm content, but I am not satisfied to the point where I never want to see any change. Change is refreshing. We even just changed some of the way that we're doing some of the media presentation in the meeting. Some of it we just stuck in a different place just to shake it up a little bit. Here's a statement that I want you to get a hold of. Change can be initially frightening, but eventually refreshing. Come on now. Change can be initially frightening, but eventually refreshing. Here's a good example. I got to the point in the ministry where I felt like I just couldn't work as hard as I was. And in particular, I really needed to get rid of a lot of the office work and just really give myself to the spiritual part of the work that God has called me to do, writing and teaching and preaching and studying and praying and things like that. And not, you know, hiring and managing several hundred people and doing all the correcting and all the stuff that goes on with running an office. And so our son, Dan, was working for us, and we really felt like that he would be right to be put in the position of CEO. But he's, he's kind of like me. When he takes over, he takes over. And... Uh, so he started wanting to make changes, and he was making changes, and I was like, oh. didn't want to change anything. So you see, a lot of times we want to get rid of pressure, but we don't want to give up anything. Or we want to give somebody a job to do, but no authority. Come on, did you hear me? We want to give them a workload, but no authority. You can't create something that I don't like. And so it took a while for me to get from being upset and frightened to being refreshed. Now I love it. I've worked through it. And now I don't have to be there day in and day out. I don't have to be in a four-day meeting about what kind of computer program we're going to get next. There's so many things now that I don't have to do that somebody else is more highly anointed to do than I am. But I'm telling you, in the beginning, it was scary to let some of it go. You know, most of us pray for change, but then when it comes, we have a tendency to fight it. Change can be very difficult. It's like we want something new, but we have a hard time letting go of the old. And so we're offering you some teaching today called How to Survive Change. You know, that's a really a lot of great word coming your way if you will just contact us and say, yes, I want to know how to let God change me and I want to know how to change my word so I can have a better life. God's got such an awesome plan for each and every one of us. And yes, that includes you.
I said, God has got an awesome plan for your life. And you know, you may be sitting right now, maybe you feel like you're at the end of your rope or you just feel like it's been so long since anything good has happened to you. But I can tell you that God does have a good plan for your life. And although you may be going through difficulties right now, you will come out of this, this too will pass, and there's good things on the other side of it. So don't you get discouraged and give up. God bless.